Okay, Gatsby and Samson, the first thing we do with them, we wake up in the morning, they slept in the kennel, right? We, before we let them out, we dress them up and we put their collars on, okay? So I did that already, Gatsby's got his on, he's on the black remote, Samson's got his collar on, he's on the, the purple remote. So, they don't come out of their kennels unless they have the tools on, otherwise the program's not on, right? And that way we can disagree with anything that we don't like and we can give commands and all that stuff and have control. So the first thing we do is just say good morning guys and we, if we're going to let them out for a potty break or something, we put those collars on first thing, okay? Um, next thing is uh, making sure we just follow some basic rules. Really easy stuff. I'm going to go over them real quick because you can rewatch this video. Uh, we're going to take back control of the house because previously, just to give everybody a little backstory, these two were kind of causing a lot of pain like havoc at home. They were, they, were, they were, not only were they barking all the time and kind of disrupting the neighborhood, they were chewing up the furniture, chewing up the floorboards, really just being destructive of the house. On top of that, they didn't listen uh, and they were a nuisance, you know? Re reactive towards all the dogs on the walks, like all we know is there was a laundry list of terrible things. So, here's one really cool thing. When we aren't working with them, they're in the kennel. They're, they're not, their home isn't the house anymore. Their home is the kennel. When they're out of the kennel, they're in our house. It's a privilege. So this is, like if we're back home and this is their living room, it's not their house anymore. Right? It's our house. They're guests in our house. And when we don't feel like working with them, this is where they go. So we need to make sure that we get the kennel thing mwah, first. Because imagine this, imagine if everything's stressful, but you can put them in there and this happens. They're quiet, they're calm, and they wait for you to come back to let them out, whether it's five minutes or five hours from now. They wait. No barking, no whining, anything. We need to get that first so that we know that there's at least one place we can put them where everything's under control, which is the count. So, we gotta work on that. What are the rules in the count? Shut up and relax. So that means I don't wanna hear you. I don't wanna hear barking, that's gonna get corrected. Um, I don't want to hear whining that's going to get corrected. I don't want pacing in there or anything that's going to get corrected. I want that. I want you relaxed. Right? Lay down and relax. Anything other than that gets corrected. How do you do that? Right? Put a baby monitor on them. Teach them this. By putting them in the kennel by your home and knocking off any of the bullshit like barking and something else. Okay? So, in order to proof them while they're in the kennel, because it's one of the first things you're going to want to do. Think of it this way. This is where we want success first, in the count. Then when we take them out of the count, we'll work on where we're out to make success, like in the living room, on a walk or on the block, um, and, and maybe in the backyard, if they have a backyard and they go out and use the bathroom. We need to make sure they know what to do, and more importantly, what not to do in those situations. That's not that many situations. Walk, living room behavior, backyard behavior, count behavior. That's where we're focusing, but we're gonna start with the count. So we can put them in their kennels and we can go out to the living room and we can go, especially if you have a baby cam. If you can have a baby monitor on them so you can actually see who's doing what. Knock, knock, knock. Bark, bark, bark. Let's look on our camera, see who's barking, and give out the consequences. Tag them on the e-collar, right? Correct them for the barking. Until they don't do it anymore. You can't correct it because they won't bark because they know it equals a correction. They need to know that happens at home. They know that happens here, we don't get barking. They, I haven't heard their voice in strap off, so, oh, well, no, that's not true. I heard them, a couple disagreements early on the first week, you know, but they're not barking at knocks, they're not barking at that kind of stuff. So, we need to accomplish that first, so we can go ahead and say, we, that's what we need to do. We need to put them in the kennel and make sure that they can be in there for duration without complaining while we're home and while we're not home, plus while there's things going on without them, like knocks on the door and stuff, even if it's set up from up, even if it's not real. Once we can get this in the behavior, uh, in the count, when we're home and when we're not home, where the dog is just kind of accepting it, that's huge. That's just so huge, okay? From there, we wake up in the morning and uh, living a day with them is, for me, is pretty simple. I'm going to let them out to use the bathroom and then I'm going to put them back in the kennels and, and feed them, right? And the way that's going to look is, uh, you know, I do them at the same time. You can start separately at first if you feel like you want to work on your relationship with each one. This early morning stuff, this potty break stuff, this is where you get to do that. So 
Uh, and yes, potty breaks. If your dog doesn't tell you when it needs to use a bathroom, you let it out every few hours. If it doesn't go, it doesn't go. We don't want to give them in the oh, how do I know if they have to use the bathroom? I don't, I live with a lot of dogs, and not one of them ever tells me they have to use the bathroom. I don't allow it. I don't need them to come up to me and tell me to go off my ass and go do something. Here's what we do. Every two to three hours, we let you have to use the bathroom. You go then. That's it. That's how I live with dogs. That's how I live with all these dogs that are here now, and that's how I live with all my personal dogs. And that, it works. I don't put a battle on here and say, just think this anytime you want me to get off my ass. It's not good for the relationship. Okay? So, what you do is you, you open up the kennel. Rule number one, don't get out of the kennel until it's old. So even an open kennel doesn't mean to get out. If he gets out, correct, place, come back in, right? And then start over, close the kennel, leave the room, come back in, open it up until we get that. Now we can move to the next step. If we can't move to the next step because he's struggling with it, we'll do a few reps and we'll just let him sit there and we'll start again later. He doesn't need to come out today. You see what I mean? They're not coming out and spending time in the living room until they're how we want them to be. They don't deserve it. They tore up the living room and they made life a mess. They made it stressful. So this is what he's getting. You don't step out until I say. What do I say? If I say break, that means he's free to come out and do whatever. But if I say come, then he has to come to me or heal. He has to follow me to the door. Wherever the door is where he's going to use the bathroom. So, um, guess it. Heal. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. Put her on there. That's fine. Nice job. Not very far in this room, but some people have to go, you know, through a few rooms. So you would heal him, walk. And all it is is him walking patiently with you to the door, giving us something of a stay, whether it's a sitter or down. Open the door. Don't go out when I open it. Wait a second. Look at me, which is good. And then break. And now he can go out. Right? And if you have a yard where he can go out, because it's fenced in, awesome. If you don't, well, you're going to have to use a leash, you know? And I would use something longer so that he can go out and use the bathroom. But here it's fenced in, so I have to do this. Right? Give him time to use the bathroom. And then I get a chance to recall him. Right? If he's out there, he's not really using the bathroom right now because this is all just for the video. He's already been satisfied today. And it's not the morning, it's actually the afternoon. But we're pretending. Okay, so he's going, he actually is, he's going, he's marking, he's going around, doing his thing, he's having fun, sparkles out there. Now when I want him in, I beep, so, beep. Just have him sit here, don't let him in. That's good. Very nice, I, I like the polite behavior, he's looking at me like saying, when can I come in? Break, good job. Sparky, come in. Sparky. Um, very nice. So let's say he went out to use the bathroom and I don't want to get the, uh, his brother out. So I'm doing them separately. Um, Gatsby. Place. I point to his kennel, time to place. It's as simple as that. He's back in the kennel. Okay? Alright. Good. And then if we want to feed, we put his food down, have him wait for it, and then let him eat it. All right, good boy. And now while he's doing that, it's this guy's turn, right? So that way we can get practice at the end of the day. Sparky. There you go, baby. Um, Santa's here. Good boy. Now the better they get as the days go on, the months go on, you've got control of these guys, the more time they're going to be able to spend with you. But what we do, when we take them out of the kennel, we give them an experience. We teach them how to be, um, and then we put them back. Because when they're in there, they're not having unwanted experiences. But when we take them out, we work with them on things that they're struggling with, and then we put them back in there. And then we'll take them out in a few hours, work with them, and then put them back. And if you don't feel like working with them that day, they can spend a day in the kennel with five bricks. Oh, but that sounds so rough. They tore up the house, the furniture, the, the, the floorboards, the carpets, what do you name it, barking and everything, being a nuisance. If I don't feel like dealing with you, that's where you are. The better you get, because I'm putting my time into when I take you out of there, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm getting our relationship good, the more I can have you out because now you, you listen and you follow the rules. But in the beginning, I'm not just going to let you out and have all this fucking free time after you get home from boot camp. 
No, no, that's home for you guys. There it is, get comfortable. When you come out, we're working on your behavior, and then you're going back in. Until you got them under your thumb. You know what I'm saying? Come. Good boy, buddy. Good boy, Sammy. Nice work. Open the door. Now, this is what I do. He steps out, he gets corrected, and recalled back in. Good. See, it catches himself. Break. Go boy. And now he gets to go potty and do his thing and hang out with Sparky and have fun. Give him his time. Um, you know, I keep an eye on him, but have his free time. And when I'm ready for him to come back in, beep. If he doesn't come, I'll correct him on the e-collar and he'll come. Uh, but, you know, at this point in the game, they don't, it's like very rare for them not to listen to the recall. You know what I mean? They usually haul, haul butt. Good boy, but, well, hang on. Let me While we're doing all this with Sam, Samson, guess who's being perfect right now? This is a dog who's doing exactly what's expected of him. He's laying down, he's waiting. He's not standing up, panting, thinking about getting out, whining. What does that equal? Punishment, right? So if I'm in the middle of doing, uh, helping Samson out, we're doing good, and I hear this guy, if I hear him make a noise, like whining, while I'm working with Samson, I have his remote with me, I simply correct it. By correcting all the nonsense, the complaining of, I wanna go out, Correct that, you get this. And that right there is a well-behaved dog. That's the face of a dog who doesn't want to do things wrong. And that's what we need. That's what we need at first going home is them being like, I'm trying to do the right thing. The only way to do that is to correct for these little rules. One of the rules is um, we don't need to hear from you. We don't ever want to hear your bark or whine. If I hear it, I'll correct it. If, if, if it's happening and I hear it, I correct you. It stops it, believe it or not. It stops it, it actually works. I know, it sounds funny, but it actually works. And then you get a dog like that who's just doing the opposite of being a pain in the ass. Okay. And he's right here, okay, so. Break. Do you see how I told him when he could come in? Good job, handsome boy. Nice work. You did nice work. You did nice work. Okay, now let's say we're working with Samson, and instead of coming back to the counter, we're like, okay, we want to work on his behavior in the house. Um, you go to the living room with the intention of getting him to mess up by doing things that he's done in the past that we don't like so that we can let him know we don't like those anymore, we don't want you to do them. One thing I would do is I'd bring him into the living room, pretend we're in the living room, and I wouldn't put him on command quite yet. I would, because uh, he's alone, and I'm looking to take five minutes to, to work on his behavior, I would just set up a scenario that I think he's gonna make a mistake in, like a knock on the door. A fake knock even the first time. If that produces what it used to produce, which is a bark, you've done your job. Now you need to follow through by saying, no, correction, that matters. The dog takes the correction, and then you give him direction, right? Twice. Okay, so let's say I knock on the door, he barks, I correct him, which I'm not gonna do because he's not gonna bark. He's not gonna bark here. Even if we had a guest come in, he's not gonna bark. Uh, to say he did though, and I corrected him, and now I'm, and now I'm, I'm done with the correction. Uh, Samson, place. That's what I would do. I'd tell him to place them. So correct and then direct. The direction is the command. But I didn't put him in command and then knock on the door this time because I wanted him to be free of a command, make a mistake, get corrected and then be told what to do. That's a good pattern to start with. Good boy, honey. Right? Then when he's on the place bed, go and add the trigger again. Get the knock on the door, right? Get the doorbell going. Get dogs barking on your phone, right? Whatever it is. And look, I don't even have to look at him not correcting him right now. Right? Because he got off. That's as simple as that. If I said place, this is how simple it is. If you get off without me telling you to, You'll, there'll be correction on the device here, which there was. And in order for that correction to turn off, you get back on. He knows that. I taught him that. So I really didn't have to do much besides watch him get off. My body didn't even make it look... I didn't even look like I was correcting him. I didn't go like, oh! Uh, you got to get good at the point where you're just going, ding. Point to the bed. Get back on there. And that looking. He... I did it that way on purpose. I wanted him, if you're going to make a mistake, make it. Right? So I told you to place, I'm not hanging on to your hand. I watched you think about getting off. I didn't say no. I didn't say don't get off. I said to myself internally, I hope he steps off so I can show him what happens when he does. He steps off, ding, right? Now he knows, now we're over it, okay?
So that's just one example. You can proof it in many different ways. You can have your kids run around, you can have squeaky balls, but you're gonna to wanna to do this one at a time with the dogs. Don't have them out together the first time. First couple of times you do it separately so that you can make sure that you're delivering the consequences at a good time and everything's good and they're, they're getting the message separately. Then once they're easy by themselves, we put them together. And we redo the whole thing. We actually redo the triggers. We try to get them to make mistakes together, correct it until it's all over. A couple of weeks down the road, if you're taking them out of the kennel with intention of dealing with their bad problems, they will avoid all those choices and you won't, it won't be, diff it would be easy. And once it's easy, then you just live with them, okay? So, 90% of our day, I'm sure it's already this way at their house, they're inside. Even more than 90%, I'm sure it's like 98% of their day they're probably inside. Probably in a room, you know? So, when they're not in the kennel and we want to hang out with them, they can hang out with us. But we're on the clock, which means we're, we, are, we are looking to work on their behavior. Are we working on place? Are we working on triggering them at things they used to trigger at? Take the vacuum out. Grab a cat. Have a guest come over. Until we can't get our dogs to mess up anymore. That's the work going home. And then it's easy. And then it becomes really easy. Okay? Samson. Break. Woo! Good boy. Good job, Sam. You did good. You did good. You did a real nice job. Okay? Place. Okay? Good, 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 good boy. Um, as far as the walks, you're going to start independently too, one at a time, take one dog out. But listen, this is what's cool about it, is that we're not spending an hour on the walk with them at first, you know? We'll take them out uh, to the door and then we'll start our walk around your neighborhood looking for a nice little walk that we can do from our door, around the block maybe, back to our door, that kind of thing. And in this little block, we're going to try to see the things that the, we think the dogs might struggle with. Maybe there's a dog behind the fence. Maybe there's, uh, you know, whatever there is, a bunch of people or whatever. Whatever type of distractions are there, we're going to work our dogs one at a time going around this block, correcting whenever they mess up. So that what we do is we heal them around the block. We heal them to a place where they can use the bathroom or have a little free time. So I would go out the door and heal them, uh, I don't know, for five minutes walking, dealing with any nonsense. Once I feel like the dog's in a good spot, I'll stop. I'll look at him and I'll let them have, I'll say break and I'll let them have some free time to uh, maybe mark on a tree or something because this is what dogs like to do. Give them a, a minute of free time, beep on that collar, right back to heel, right back home. That's it. That's it. Master that before we go and do more with them. That's all you need with these dogs anyways, a little walk around your block, you know. Um, I don't like stress, so I punish it. Stress being, I'm thinking about options. I'm currently in the kennel, but I'm thinking about free time. I'm thinking about the walk, I'm thinking about whatever I'm thinking about. This says no to whatever you're thinking about, so stop thinking about it. And then we get a dog who stops thinking about it, which means it stops panting. He's not panting because it's hot. It's not a hot day, it's not hot in here. He's not hot. He's panting because he's thinking about things he'd rather be doing. And then I go like this, and then he says, okay. And then now he's back to what he's supposed to be doing, which is nothing, including not thinking about the things you want to be doing, because that's going to lead to a whine. And if I hear you whine, it's not going to be good. You see, I know it sounds like, well, geez, that's harsh. It's like, well, you want control, and they're two years old, and they haven't had control before. In fact, they've been a wreck. This is what it takes. It's like, breathe wrong, and you get corrected. Yeah, that's what it's going to be like for a little while if you're doing it right. But eventually... They, they're really good, and then you can kind of loose up a little bit. But if you don't keep running a tight ship at first, uh, you know, it's not going to work. So, I'm going to use them independently, then put them together. I've already done that with them independently, so we'll take them together here. So look at these little rules and how they're really helping out the structure of the day, how he's not running out that door. How many dogs do you know, any normal dog from any normal house, just bust straight the door as soon as you open it. All sorts of frantic and shit. That's the problem. That right there is, you just freeze. It's all gonna go downhill from that. It's all gonna be shit from there because of the way it came off the counter. Like, it's already, it's already done. You've already done it, right? Starting to mess up. So look at this. Now we're ready to leave the counter because these dogs are saying, yes sir, yes ma'am. 
This is what it looks like when, you, when you've got a dog saying, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, and they're saying they're waiting to take direction. It looks like they're either extremely bored or sad. That's what we get from people. But you know what it really is? This dog's mining, uh, the, minding the rules, right? We don't want you bolting out and we don't want you complaining what's left. Just sit there and relax. Now watch this. Break. Woo! Good job. Okay? So this is a guy who's just trying to do the right thing, this guy. He's just, he's like, you know what, I know they like it when I'm on these things, you know, I'm just going to try. And look, look at these, look at the choices, you know, these dogs would be all over the place. I mean, like, now, go check out what's over there, go check those toys over there, let's go upstairs, let's go there. They're just waiting for me, right? And this is where they get their affection. My little guys, yeah, okay? So we're going to go for a walk, um, and... Then we'll come back in and, and show you how to, uh... Yeah. Okay, boys. All right, let's head right upstairs with the camera rolling. Yeah. Might, might as well. I don't have leashes, so we'll grab two leashes. Leashes, I'll grab one. Yeah, like, look, this means it's right. This means you did it right. If you see that at home, that's what you see, that means you're doing it right. You should be throwing a party for yourself. He's using a state of mind that was trained. All right, he's, he learned that that state of mind is what you go into uh, whenever, whenever you're in doubt, like, especially after you're punished or something, you need to go into that state. This state right here, he knows keeps him out of trouble. This is a passive state, which means things can come and go, strangers could literally walk through that door right now, and he's not interacting with them. He's choosing to be passive because he's learned that that means success. What gets them in trouble is when they try to interact with everything. You see that dog? <laughs> you're going to get in trouble. You hear that? See that person? You're gonna get in trouble. Running up on them? You're gonna get in trouble. Whining? You're gonna get in trouble. All that's left is this. And then we say, I like that. <laughs> it's that simple. Good. Alright. And then when we get to a place where it's appropriate to play, like outside and it's time to play, then all of a sudden you're gonna see these dogs light up and play. And they're gonna have fun. And you're gonna, yeah, they're gonna get their energy out, they're gonna be having a good time. But this isn't the time to do it in the living room. No, you're gonna drive me insane. No, I can't, I can't. Right? I can't hear the little click, 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 click all over the floor. So it'll, you know, it's like, I, you can't move around like that, guys, because it's gonna drive me nuts. All right, so, and the cool thing about that is, is again, that's how dogs deal with each other. If an elder dog is trying to relax and they're running around trying to play, he's going to correct them uh, because he, it's not the time. And that's very normal. So I'm just acting like the elder dog, right? Good. It's, it's one of my pet peeves, and it's something that's created young with them. Uh, you try to put a tool on them, and it's a fuss. For me, if I go to put, if I put this here, what I want to see, if I'm, I want to see the dog go like this. Not only allow me to put it on, but, but start to, uh, you know, not just accept that I'm going to put it on. Like, hey, you can put that over my head. Not this. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want them to, to let me put it on their head. And so he got corrected twice for the nonsense. And then what did he do? What did he do? He let me put it on his head. Dogs are smart. And you didn't say any words. I didn't have to. Right. I, I corrected at the moment he did the thing I didn't like. And then when he when I offered it to him and he didn't do the thing I didn't like, he did the thing I liked. I said good. Those were the only. That was the communication. The correction. He knew it was silent, but he knew it meant 
when you felt the correction, what you were doing then is what I didn't like, which was moving away from me, putting on all those little things for me personally, with my personal dogs and with the dogs that come through this program, all those little things are there. I'm trying to put something on you, you're doing this. To me, that's part of a core issue of yours, where you're, 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 you're being difficult. When, you know, and that's an ex a little example of you doing it, so I tackle it. All those little things. Sammy didn't do that. Sammy, let me put it right on, right? Not saying that Sam was perfect or anything, but that's just an example of like, that's what I would do, you know, little things like that, because we're constantly talking to them. But look at their state, look at how, because we're taking it to that level, these guys are under control more than most dogs, okay? Break! Woo! Good boy! Come on, Sammy, let's go. Try to take it up the stairs. Another room. The rules of the uh, when we're hanging out with humans are okay, we just came to this room, right? They are not allowed to up and leave this room now without me telling them to leave the room or offering. So that means that I don't want to catch them picking themselves up and checking out what's in the bathroom, what's in the closet, what's in this bedroom, what's downstairs, what's in Jesse's room, what's in the kitchen. You know what I mean? They're to hang out with now, but she's going to hang out with Julie right, right next to her. Right? Which is a good choice. They weren't directed to do anything. Good boys. But this, to me, when I see these guys right now, they're like, I want to do the right thing. They're trying very hard to not um, cross the lines that we set. And one of those lines would be wandering over the house. Just, <laughs> for no, that's not okay. Unless I said, let's play right now, and let's play around this room, and you can run around and do whatever you want. We don't want you picking yourself up and moving around a lot. So, for example, if they did, if I'm sitting here doing something, you know, I'm on my phone or I'm eating, and I, and I see one of these dogs pick themselves up and just start moving around a lot, like, oh, I'm going to sniff over here behind here. I think I'll come check this out. They're going to get cracked. I know, right? I know. But this is how you keep a dog in their place. This is how you keep a dog from thinking that it's even an option to put their mouth on something in your house. There, these rules exist so that we never see those big things. If they don't think they can even get up and walk around without permission, uh, then they're not gonna go chew on stuff, guys. Okay? It's just not gonna happen. So, and you can see this is almost unfairly easy, right? But it won't be for the honors because we have past associations. Past associations of what I used to do in this house, what I used to do with this person, what I used to do in this car. They're going to try all the old behaviors. They're going to get corrected and, re and directed. And then over the course of a couple of weeks, everything will be much smoother. But this is, these are the rules we need, we need to keep in mind, okay? So I'm going to bring for a walk now. Uh, Samson, Gatsby, come. Come on, guys. Very good, Gatsby. Yeah, no, no. There it is. Okay, very good. All right. Look at this. Wide open door. Now the first thing he's gonna do at home is he's gonna he might try to go right through that door, but then he gets corrected and recalled, and with that we try again. We shut the door and we try again until they get it right. Okay. Now if I release them, if I say break, they are more than welcome to go running around. They can run right out there whenever because I said break, right? But if I say, uh, let's go, that means I kind of want you to follow me. It's a little loose, it's not a, it's not a heel. But if I say heel, or, or recall, deep on here. Boy, he heard the word heel when he did not do what he meant. Good. Uh, then I need them to be tight with me, walk to the next place. Right, because now we're traveling to the place. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have them follow me to the place where then I would release them. So if you're going out your front door, you're gonna ask them to follow you because you are in the city to a spot where then they can be free or use the bathroom. Even if it's literally like a, a little tree on the sidewalk that they go and pee on. It's a place that we go, okay? If you have more to offer, then that'd be cool too, like a field or something where they can kind of run around a little bit. But if you don't have that, don't worry about it. These guys are fine. They don't seem to care much. Okay? Simple rules. Now here's the thing. I'm gonna tell them to heal. They're welcome not to. 
I'm just going to hold them accountable with corrections until they're back into heel. And this is how we live. They're welcome not to. Okay? So the beep means follow. It doesn't mean go have a class. So I'm going to beep both of them, and then they, they have to follow me to the next location. Following means we're not, we're being passive. We're not interacting with the environment, which means sniffing, that's interacting. Barking, that's interacting. Pulling, that's interacting. Paying too close attention to something out there, that's interacting. Ignoring it and following me, that's perfect. Now when we get there and I say break, then you can go and do all that stuff. Then you can sniff, then you can do all that, okay? Here we go. Good boys. So we're heading up the stairs. We're going to probably head over to that tree over there. I imagine if we're in the city, we don't have to walk too far. Hopefully. Another thing is, look at my legs. If I feel this guy, little Sammy, he sees the car over there, if I feel him trying to bump into my leg because he's trying to look over there, my leg's just gonna keep going straight. So it will hit him in the head, and that is okay. That'll keep him from bumping into my leg. I'm not gonna compromise and move for him, or either of them. I move where I move. That's an old dog thing, it's just what you do. You don't let the dog push you around. Right, I'm going where I'm going, and they're following, okay? And they're doing a great job at it. Give them a little shush, which means to stay, you know? Um, sign language. When I take my hand like this and I go, that means to stay, okay? If I go like this, that means to stay. If I go like, when they're already doing it, but if I go like that, that means to down, right? And if I do that, that means to break. Oh, and if I give them a thumbs up, then you're doing good. We'll go through all that stuff. Right? So now I'm at this area where I feel like, hey, they could probably go free right here, right? So I'm gonna let them free. Woo, the boys! Go for it, guys. Break. Get the guy, he knows what's up. He knows what's up. So they can, you know, at home, they'll they'll find their little things to do. They're all around here, they like to romp around. Usually we have another dog out with them, like Sparkles. They'll romp around, they'll go mark. They'll have a time, they'll have a good time. They'll get, they'll, they'll get tired, they'll get it all out of their system. Um, and then when I'm ready, I have a beep on, on, on this, these remotes to get them back to me and back to uh, traveling, so to the next spot. I'll give you an example of that if I wanted to move them a little bit. Come beep on here. Good job, guys. And then letting them know with a little swat on the side there. Good job, boy. Good boy. My little monster. Good boy. Look how nice you look. I gave him a correction. Okay. We'll head over here. Like, I'm just making shit up now, bro. I'm gonna bring them over here. Stay. Okay? I like to have them stay for a second. Always proof them that. This looks like a safe spot. I get to check out the spot. It looks pretty good. If you're in the city, you're gonna kinda like let people walk by, you know, and then it looks like the coast is clear for a second. I don't know where you're living, if it's, if it's ever clear. But uh, when I'm ready for them to have a free time, break, Woo! the boys get it, and they can go out and do this thing. All right, good job. You know, there you go, he knows what to do. There you go. That was good, that was good. So they're kind of getting used to doing their business and then coming back and saying, so now we're traveling to the next place. It's a nice pattern. Literally, like, okay, we had a nice little walk and potty and like, let's head back home because, you know, there's nothing else to do with you guys. 
<laughs> you know, it's probably go for a little stroll, do a little potty break, maybe find a place to play if you have it. If you don't, you don't. Head back home. Do it again in a few hours. Now, if there's dogs around in your neighborhood and you're like, there's dogs behind this fence that they always struggle with, we're gonna take them out one at a time and we're gonna we're gonna put them around that situation, which we'll describe how to do at the go home, and let them make choices. Are you going to react? Okay, you do. Here's a correction, and I'm gonna recall you back to me. We're gonna try again until you don't want to do it anymore. And tomorrow we're gonna try it again, and the next day we're gonna try it again until we get up to these barking dogs, and you're like, I don't want to do that. And then you say, Good. Why don't you heal? And then, and so it really takes care of the problem. All right. So now. I'm back here, they're getting my pattern, you see them beep. Good, and that's my boy. Okay. This is the stuff to work on. Because if you can do this uh, and keep them in heel and you know, eventually you know, walk by dogs and walk by people, that's the whole, that's what everybody's struggling with. They're struggling with walking, getting this to begin with, and then getting this while we walk by people and dogs. It's the whole thing. That's what we're making a whole career doing. See this little guy, look how firm I'm being with that foot there. I'm saying don't, you know, I'm walking straight. He has a tendency to lean. You see him leaning in there? So my foot isn't changing. It'll just bop right in the head. That's my solution for that. Okay, so doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Boy. Pretty darn good. Cool about these dogs, they tire out real quick. So it's like one one walk around the block and Gatsby's already, you know, exhausted. I'm proud of you boys, this is nice. So just like a little walk, you know, a little short walk, they had their little free time. They go back in and relax for a while. I gave Gatsby a correction there. He, he adjusted properly. Come on, boy. Very good. Good dog. There's that door. Good. Break. And now we're back into the comfort of our house. Okay. And we're in our living room. I'm proud of my boy. Who did a good job? Who did a good job? Who did it? Did Gatsby do a good job? Did Gatsby? Gatsby, Gatsby did a good job. Yes, he did. Yes, 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 he did, yes, he did. Who did good? Yes, he did, yes, he did. Now I'm giving this kind of ramped up just so I can show you. I'm going from, from crazy to fun. Yeah, they're not getting too crazy. But. So now I walk over to the bed, place, they haven't been on this bed yet, so let's see how they do. It's Riggins' bed. They each just got corrected just now. Place. Come on, Gatsy. There you go, almost. Gatsy, place. Nice work. No, no, these guys, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of my boys. I'm proud of my boys. Mistake. Okay? Who is it? I'll oh, get it. You got it? I got it. Got it. You 
Break. 